In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, in abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out with a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and around the four living creatures, they prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes? And where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. He had a drinking problem. He was addicted to gambling and a, a bit of a womanizer. And yet he did it. She was a woman of the world, a lady of the streets. Everyone knew what she was like, and, well, she did it. He was an atheist, an agnostic, a, he had a child before he was married. He enjoyed the good life as he traversed all over the world. 
and he did it. Their names, Camillus Dolellus, Mary Magdalene, Augustine of Hippo. And what did they do? Very simply, they became saints. They took God seriously at some point in their life, made a change, and that made all the difference. And they became one of the holy ones of God. Camillus became a priest. Mary Magdalene, a faithful follower of Christ, even to the hill of Calvary. And Augustine, perhaps one of the greatest theologians in the history of the church. Today, the church across the world celebrates the feast of all saints. Uh, only once every six or seven years is it on a Sunday. It's a holy day of obligation, nonetheless. But on this feast, all saints, when we celebrate all those known and unknown to us people whom we call saints, we honor a group of people, countless in number, who at some point in their lives looked at their lives, took God seriously, and then not only changed their lives, but changed the world. And their taking God seriously resulted not in a prize or reward of this world as much as a fulfillment, a completion of their lives. For in God, they found the answer to their living here on earth and an eternal life. They found God, who was the fulfillment of all their hopes, all their dreams, all their desires. And these saints, depicted on windows of this beautiful church and in our candle room, in every Catholic church, these saints, known and unknown to us, ask us but one simple question. How seriously do we take God? How much does God's existence, his living word and sacred scripture proclaimed from this pulpit and his body and blood poured out, for, out of love for us, how does that make a difference in our lives? Or does it? Are we simply here on Sunday morning because, well, that's what I've always done? Or do we have the desire to become saints? To examine our conscience, see where we need to change, and to change not only ourselves, but to change the world. Saints are not extraordinary human beings. No, they are ordinary people who took God seriously and then did extraordinary things. Today, this great communion of saints, this great company of holy ones, invite us to do, to, do, to do the same, to let God make a difference in the way we live our lives. You know, someday, this could be your feast as well. God bless you all. We stand now to profess one faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has set into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's people on earth, let us unite our prayers with all the saints in heaven for the needs of men and women everywhere. For Pope Francis, that he may continue to lead the community of the faithful on earth to experience the bliss of eternal life with the community of saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer persecution for the sake of the gospel, that they may continue steadfastly in the way the saints walked before them, rejoicing in their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our religious freedom in this country and throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we elect those who will lead us, that inspired by the Holy Spirit and guided by our faith, we may choose those who will guide our nation in the preservation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have gone before us in faith, that they may be brought speedily to behold God forever, especially for Greta Cardarelli, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Father of holiness and grace, we offer the petitions with the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, confident in your mercy revealed in their heroic lives. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing unto you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your holy city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, to be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his auxiliary bishop, and all the clergy. And remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Greta Cardarelli, whom, who, whom you have called from this world unto yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Queen of Carmel, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, our ushers will lead you from the front of the church to the back, down the side aisles, and then down the center aisle in single file for the reception of Holy Communion. We ask you especially to be mindful of, of those blue lines on the floor, the out of the social distance markers. I've asked the ushers to slow it down a bit, so especially in the back of the church, there isn't a crowd of people. You should be at those six foot markers just to keep everybody safe. Father Steve and I are in the front of the church giving out communion. If you're receiving on the tongue, we just ask you to wait until the end of the communion line. A prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ. There certainly was a wonderful article in um, the Bristol Phoenix this past Thursday about all the things we did for our uh, takeout event uh, throughout the summer uh, in place of the feast that did so well. Uh, financially did better than the food at the feast. Uh, so there's just one thing missing from the article, um, all of you. Uh, because really because of all of you, all those who help cook food and uh, worked the takeout kitchen and helped, um, uh, c came and bought food and everything. So it's a great PR for the parish, that article in the Bristol Phoenix. So uh, thank all of you for all that you've done. A little congratulations is in order to the Knights of Columbus. Their founder, Father Michael McGivney from the Archdiocese of Hartford, was beat beatified yesterday. It's the final step. Uh, before being declared a saint. He was a priest of the Hartford Diocese uh, in the mid to late 1800s, and he um, established the, the Knights of Columbus. And of course, the Knights are so wonderful in helping out our parish and our school and the community at large. A little tidbit about um, Father Michael McGivney, blessed Michael McGivney, is that when he was a young altar boy, the parish uh, south of Hartford, his pastor was Father Thomas Hendrickin, who became the first bishop of the Diocese of Providence and is buried in our cathedral. So congratulations to the Knights of Columbus. The scraping and paintings of all, painting of all the, wind, the outside windows of our church is completed along with the repair of the sacristy wall, the plaster in the sacristy wall and the plaster up here someplace that they took care of. So we thank all of you for your continued support for the Grateful for God's Province campaign. We're able to do all the projects that you wanted us to do, that we wanted to do, to keep our, our buildings and our property and our programs going. So we thank you for that, that great support. We'll begin the next project as soon as the next quarterly money comes in. We'll figure out what we want to do um, for our parish. Some sad news that I have to report. A week ago Tuesday, a week ago Tuesday, uh, the statue of Our Lady of Mount Carmel in front of the school, that beautiful statue, uh, was egged. Uh, obviously, intentionally done. Police were called 
as well as a town administrator. Uh, it's a hate crime, is what it was. Because on last Saturday night, red paint was splattered all over that statue as well. Obviously, intentionally done. I did ask the police not to make a big deal of it. I didn't want copycat people thinking now this is the new statue to go after, after it. The police have been monitoring our property extensively. In fact, last Monday, I was out for my usual five in the morning walk of two and a half miles and walked by the statue to make sure it was okay. And this big SUV pulled up, it was a black SUV and window rolled down and the police said, hi, father, how's it going? And I said, I can't, I can't see who you are. The lights weren't on in his car. Well, it was some officer from Bristol Police. He said, father, I've been out here since 11 o'clock last night. It's my duty to guard the statue, to watch it, to see if anything happens. So we're thankful for the Bristol Police. We have desired to put cameras at all the doors of our school and our church uh, for safety's sake. Um, as you know, throughout the United States, religious statues, among other statues, have been targeted with paint and eggs and smashing them and knocking off heads. Uh, for a point, I do not know, nor I, do I understand. Churches have been set on fire, uh, graffiti all over the walls of churches. Um, this is sad. This is not America, and it has to change. But we'll take care of it here. Some people have come forward to help pay for the cameras, and we'll make sure that our property is, is safe. Um, November is a month of remembrance in the church. It begins with All Saints Day today and tomorrow All Souls Day. I know none of you have those envelopes where you write names of people, your loved ones who have passed away. Those envelopes will be placed upon the altar. And all, every Mass, every day during November, we'll pray for all of our faithful departed that through the mercy of God they may rest in peace. And finally, all Catholics are to be good Americans. This coming Tuesday is our national and state and local elections. I hope all who are eligible to vote are registered to vote. And if you haven't already done so through an early voting process, I hope you exercise that right to vote this Tuesday. Father Steve and I will be voting on election day. Father Steve and I would never presume to tell you how or what or who to vote for. In 38 years of being a priest, I have never done that from the pulpit, would never do that. But in all 38 years, and Father Steve agrees with me because we've talked about this issue, it's the responsibility of the shepherd of souls, as Father Steve and I, uh, to address important issues that we think are issues that we need to consider. Uh, so I'll do this briefly right now. After discussion with Father Steve, we're both on the same page. Uh, as shepherds of souls, it's imperative to address issues that are important. I think you'll agree with the five things, and there's so many, but the five things we picked out, you'll agree they're important issues. Now, how we vote on them, I don't, uh, I don't know what you're gonna do, but the issues are important first. Respecting all human life from the moment of conception until the time of natural death. Pope Francis has declared this the most fundamental and basic of human rights on which all other rights find their foundation. Father Steve and I agree. It's a very important issue for us. Second, an end to violence and terrorism and injustice and racism and rioting and lawlessness so that despite our differences, we can live as Americans in peace and harmony. I remember a day when Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan were best of friends, despite their political differences. I remember a time when Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Antonin Scalia and their spouses could go out to dinner and enjoy the opera, opera despite being complete polar opposites. Father Steve and I long to see that time in America again. 
Third, an end to war, a world at peace. Where hostility doesn't resolve conflicts, but a mutual respect, understanding, and negotiation is effective. Now, as pragmatics, we know that sometimes that doesn't work, but should be tried first. Maybe the world would be a better place, a world at peace. Fourth, jobs for our young people. Father Steve and I want an America where businesses can thrive and provide meaningful employment with just wages for all Americans, not just a privileged few. Many of us have had good jobs and been able to provide for our families and our children and our grandchildren and be able to provide for our retirements. We want that for our youth, that they are able to do, do the same. We want an America where jobs are plentiful, wages are just, businesses thrive, and the work environment is healthy. And finally, freedom of religion. I don't want to live in a country that says, if you are a devout Jew, a devout Muslim, a devout Protestant, a devout Catholic, or a devout atheist, you can't be a good American. I don't want to live in that country. Our country, indeed our state, was founded upon freedom of religion, where all religions are respected, and our religious leaders are encouraged to speak forth on the issues of the day, because they too, as Americans, have freedom of speech. Freedom of religion and freedom of speech go hand in hand in our country, the land of the free and the home of the brave. So these are our thoughts. I hope you consider them. There are many other issues, of course, as well. Please go and vote. Let your devout faith inform your decisions. And in that regards, on Tuesday, uh, Election Day, we'll have adoration all day here in the church. We have morning mass at 7, church is open at 6, morning mass at 7, 7.30 to 6 p.m. The Eucharist will be on the altar, time for all to come and pray, and, uh, spend time in prayer for, to pray for our nation as we select our community and state and national leaders. So that's all day on Tuesday. And finally, as we've been doing so successfully, not only here in our parish, but um, throughout the Diocese of Province, the state of Rhode Island, um, if when you leave, uh, slowly, <laughs> If you put your kneelers down so that we can sanitize the church, we have a baptism right after this mass, so we could use some extra help uh, sanitizing the church. As I said at the beginning, four times, I'll say it for the fifth, there has not been a tracing of COVID-19 to any Catholic worship site or masses or sacraments since we opened on Pentecost Sunday. You should be aware of that fact. And it's, it's because of what we do, it's social distance, wearing masks, sanitizing, school, the church. With all your help, we're able to do that well. So thank you very much. If you can help out after mass, we'd greatly appreciate it. Please stand. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you forever and ever. Go in peace.